today I'm going to be featuring a premium squad uh, from the Berlin campaign uh, known as the Volkssturm. I know I'm mispronouncing it. I know I do not speak Deutsch. Today's video is going to be a little bit more serious because we're covering a topic um, that should be handled in a serious manner. This person runs a little YouTube channel that I would like to cover today and we're just gonna let him do all the talking. I'm gonna put my mic up and please enjoy this wonderful information that, that is being shared. But here we go. Let's look at the Volkssturm, sometimes referred to as Hitler's militia. First off, let's clarify the name. It is usually translated with people's storm. Although since the word Volk has a strong national connotation, it might also be translated with national storm or even national assault. Since Sturmangriff means assault and Sturm was sometimes used as a short form for Sturmangriff. Now since we got that out of the way, what is the origin behind the Volkssturm? It was founded in September 1944, so after the destruction of Army Group Center by the Soviets in Operation Bagaton, the Allied landings in Normandy and the unsuccessful assassination attempt against Hitler. All these three happened in summer 1944. As such, the Volkssturm was the last ditch effort, an act of desperation. Yet it is a bit more complicated than that. In the logic of the Third Reich's leaders, the Volkssturm was actually seen as a way to change the course of the war. The Volkssturm, although clearly an improvisation in many of the details of its implementation, was part of a consistent, though ideologically influenced, strategy intended to turn the tide of the war in Germany's favor. But this was an organization of the party, not the German military. The July 20 plot destroyed any confidence the party leadership might have had in the Wehrmacht's abilities to head the war effort and confirmed Nazi suspicions that the Reich's reversal were due to defeatist, traitorous officers. The Reich certainly could not trust such unreliable men with the delicate task of forming a national militia. Before, the Volkssturm was about achieving the difficult balance between providing immediate manpower and defenses while at the same time keeping the production levels as high as possible. Now let's take a short look at the idea that the Volkssturm should have won the war. For most of us that sounds like a complete insane idea. And with the power of hindsight it clearly is. But you should not forget several aspects. First, in June 1944 the Wehrmacht suffered two major defeats, the invasion of Normandy and the destruction of Army Group Center. Yet after Normandy, the Germans fought tenaciously and for quite some time the Western Allies could not break out of more Normandy, something I covered in this video about hetero fighting. Similarly, a few months later Operation Market Garden also faced stiff German resistance and was unsuccessful. Thus, in some regions the conscription age was raised in October 1944 to up to 45 years of age for those who were not engaged in war production. As such, the Volkssturm had a strategic idea and logic behind it, as flawed as it might be. The leaders of the Third Reich, lacking objectivity and the luxury of hindsight, hoped to turn the tide by creating among all Germans a fanatical will to resist. This would enable them to force the Allies to fight bitterly for every German city, town and village, and thereby turn the war into a protracted stalemate. Such a struggle would maximize Allied casualties and minimize their territorial gain. Eventually, they expected that war weariness would wear down Allied morale and ultimately collapse Allied war effort. In effect, they hoped to replay the 1918 stab in the back scenario, only this time with the roles being reversed. The first Levi was defined as follows. The first Levi of the Volkssturm includes, as far as nothing else is determined in the following, all members of the age group 1928 to 1884 who are fit for combat operations and whose assignment is possible without endangering vital functions of their homeland. It is important to point out here that most men serving the function were old men and not children, according to Yelton, that a lot of children were already serving in another way that made them exempt from Volkssturm service, for instance, Flakhelfer. So auxiliary troops that served in the anti-aircraft units, namely those who were not part of the Volkssturm, neither were the men of the Reichsarbeitsdienst, the Reichsworkers service, I personally assume that the collective memory 
with the association of folks you with children likely stems from several factors. First, veterans likely refer to the most young soldiers as the Volksium at some point. Second, documentaries and media likely did the same. Third, in popular depictions, children are usually used since everyone pretends to care about them when there is something to gain, yet not when it comes to real action. After all, it is remember the children. In terms of ranks, the system was very simple. There were only five ranks. Volkssturmmann, Volkssturmmann, Gruppenführer, Squad Leader, Zugführer, Platoon Leader, Kompanieführer, Company Commander, Bataillonsführer, Battalion Commander. Now how many served in the Volkssturm is hard to determine. Theoretically it was a huge number because in September 1944 a total of 13.3 million German men were working in the arms industry. Meanwhile 11.2 million were members of the Wehrmacht. Yet Yelten estimates that the actually employed numbers are quite different. With East Prussian constituting 30% of all Eastern Volkssturm missing in actions and an estimated 200,000 men serving in the East Prussia in January 1945, one can estimate that upwards of 650,000 Volkssturm men saw action on the Eastern Front. In terms of weapons and equipment, the situation was bad. Although in fall 1944 the monthly requirements for the Wehrmacht was 300,000 rifles, the arms industry was only able to produce 200,000 pieces of the 98 carbine. Quite often the Volkssturm was equipped with capture weapons, for instance Italian rifles. There were other initiatives as well. The most ambitious of these programs involved the so-called People's Rifles, Volksgewehre, simplified versions of standard firearms that could in theory be produced in approximately one-fourth the time in the smallest locksmith shop or with voluntary factory overtime. When it came to uniforms, those were often various party uniforms that were dyed with Wehrmacht colors. In this way, dyeing with color M44, it was possible to equip almost all battalions called for the Wehrmacht deployment with uniforms, or by those of the party, the SA, SS, and the National Socialist Motor Corps. There was another problem, for instance with the first Levi that was used only in local defense since it was active in essential industries and thus the training time was severely limited. As a result of long working hours, which in the armament industry were up to 78 hours a week, only Sundays were available for practical weapons and combat training. The training duty on Sundays was not to exceed six hours, including the march to and from home. Let us wander off a bit into wishful thinking and as such here some essential parts from the Ausbildungsbefehl, the training order from October 1944 for the Volkssturm. Number five. The training on the rifle shall achieve complete mastery of the weapon and accurate fire up to 150 meters. The focus here is on marksmanship training. It should be relocated early on into the field. Number six, the training on the light machine gun has the goal of full control of this weapon. The gunner must be trained to fire short bursts. Number seven, the training on the light mortar has the goal of complete control of the equipment. Number eight, training with hand grenades should train the Volkssturmmen in high, low and target throwing in close combat. Number nine, the training in anti-tank combat includes the complete mastery of the Panzerfaust as well as training in the other means of close combat against tanks. Number 11, the instruction with the submachine gun, the pistol and laying or picking up of mines shall give the Volkssturmmen a knowledge about the corresponding equipment so that he can use it in an emergency. To conclude, the Volkssturm is far more interesting than it seems at first glance especially considering that a handful of Volkssturm units were quite successful. So this uh, channel is military history not visualized. And you can see right, right up here, you see this little subscribe button and uh, this little bell icon. There's a reason that I have this little bell icon set to all, right? I'm really glad that y'all stopped by today because... Um, Today's video, today's video is the first video that I uploaded to YouTube, but through the magic of editing, through the magic of editing with, again, a free program called DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to link that tutorial again in the description. Let's just get on to the gameplay. Yeah, I think today is going to be a really good video. It's a remix. <laughs>
Just gotta be fearless. Just gotta be fearless. You can't be afraid of it. These Russians aren't shitty or hot. There's a few nice kills. There's another one. That goes in, guts come out. That goes in, guts do come out. Just take a quick little half century to re reload this rifle. Takes a minute. He was dead. Sit down. Sit the f down. Wow. Very effective rifle. Very effective. Top notch. Top notch. Incredible to use. Incredible to use. Nice little kill through the bushes. Didn't even see us. Take off in the distance. Gotta show him who's boss. Gotta show him who's boss. Gotta show him who's boss. Not see that guy. Not see him. There he is. Out of bullets. Pull out that lapel. Like uh, their close air support just took out all of their guys. <laughs> That's why friendly fire exists in this game. Four decisions lead to losses. Period. Only need one bullet. Only need one. Knock goes in, guts come out. Knock goes in, guts come out. Market for your team. Just keep stacking them up. Just keep on laying them down, laying them down. Just putting them to bed. Just gotta put them to sleep. They don't like to take their medicine. They don't like to take their good medicine. They hate that shit. You just gotta give it to them. I cannot aim for shit. Just gotta whittle them down. Just gotta whittle those bastards down a little bit. That's all. Just gotta show them who's boss. You gotta show them how to work that bolt action. <laughs> Maybe give them a little bayonet shit too. But just stab them up a little bit. Bullets. Because they love that medicine. That's right. Oh yeah, here we go. So that's just our team. Lob some party in their general direction. Oh baby. This is not good. That's a nice little flick shot. I cannot see a damn thing. Nice another a little, uh, I think that was a headshot, not sure. Yep, that was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. A little explosive pack action I'm going on. There's a tank. There's a tank. Let's take him out. Let's do our team a favor here. Ok, 
Okay. I need you to move or shoot someone. At least get some kills. Please, please, guys, get out of my way. Looks like the Russians are almost out of steam. We have this game in the bag. Nope. Oh, hi there. You see, you just gotta send it from downtown. You just have to send it from downtown. Give him the grease, Tom. Give those fuckers the grease. Give those fuckers the grease. Mmm. Not greasy enough. I got grease for you. They might actually cap that. They might actually cap that. That's fine. We got one more push in us. Two more points that they still have to fight for to beat us. Yep. 100 tickets? No way they get this. Okay, give them the spin around. Give them the little boop. Okay, it's fine. Hi there. Hi there. We're just gonna fluff them a little bit. We're just gonna fluff those Russians up a little bit. Oh yeah. Eight tickets. They got eight tickets. Eight tickets. Hmm. Yes, there's the victory. Doctor Seven. The best radio operator. Ugh, what a gross. What a, what a gross award to have. Why couldn't it have been best month with the bolt action? You see all those shots I got off? You see the pop, 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 pop. You just gotta work that bolt. You don't need a machine gun. You don't need that much firepower. You just need a good bolt action rifle and some patience. Seven out. Well, what do they mean, huh? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another weird episode. I'm sure y'all are probably getting used to that by now. Uh, <clears throat> anyhow, uh, a few of you on the Discord, you know, I've been, you know, you and I've been. DM back and forth, whatever. People have been asking me what's with the damn candles. <laughs> so, we're going to talk about it today. Yeah. So, uh, one of the ways that, and y'all are probably going to think I'm crazy, you know, I'm the, I'm the guy that tells you blue light makes you calm, right? And here I get angry. <laughs> The, the candles, they represent loss, right? Well, to me, and my process kind of tell you what I'm thinking is, like, say the one in the middle here, you know, she's been burning for a few days, right? She's been, I've been lighting this candle every morning, thinking about what it means to me, and uh, 
<laughs> not to divulge too much information, but you know, recently separated from my employer. To to which the only thing I'm gonna say is, it's regrettable, right? A lot of good people there, a lot of people I'm gonna miss. But it is what it is, and uh, once this little kitten's done and burned out, throw it away, and we move on. Yeah. <clears throat> They're just there. The candles are there as a reminder of why I need to improve as a human being, right? <laughs> Not to get too metaphysical on y'all, but you know what I mean. I know you understand. We all make mistakes. We're all human. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> to anyone who's watching has made it this far, uh, I appreciate your support. I really do. I really, really appreciate every one of you. On to better things, huh? <laughs>